Summer has given over to early autumn when we visit Tiedan Baltak, just outside Tiederholm. For more than three decades, fly fishermen have gathered here to fish the streams and the river is continually stocked with rainbow trout and the native Tiedan trout. Tiedan's reputation for excellent fishing has spread beyond Sweden, which is why you often meet fishermen from all over Europe here. As well as the trout fishing, Tiedan is renowned for the richness of its insect fauna. You can find several species of mayflies, caddis and stoneflies here throughout the season. The uppermost pool in these waters, below the falls, has always got plenty of fish in it. You need to approach the pool quietly from below to avoid spooking the fish gathered at the neck of the pool. There are several fish rising along the edges of the current, but the rises are small and hard to spot. Johan starts to fish the neck using the upstream free drift presentation method. The drifts are short, but are repeated several times over the same places. When the neck has been fished, he continues with the rest of the pool. Even if there seems to be an even middle of water, the surface is divided into lesser surface currents of differing speeds. To prevent the fly dragging, Johan tries to place the fly line and fly in the same current. Immediately upstream, on the other side of the neck, a fish suddenly starts rising on the edge of the foam. In order to satisfy the different interests of fly fishermen, the river's stocked with fish of all sizes. But occasionally, rainbow fry escape and flourish in the river. In time, they become acclimatized and adapted to the river. The afternoon fishing in the pool has been a success. No particular group of insects has dominated. The fish have taken a little of everything. So what our flies have imitated has been less important than the methods used to fish. Today's successful fishing has whetted our appetites and we decide to wait for the evening to see what it has to offer. More and more caddis flies can be seen above the surface. Close to the bank, we can see a few mayfly spinners floating by. A spent spinner imitation worked well in England. Will it work just as well on the Tiedem? Out in the river, we can see a few sporadic rises. But as the fish are moving all the time, it's difficult to predict where the next fish will appear. Instead of just fishing at random and risk scaring the fish, it's better to wait calmly for a fish that starts rising more frequently. When the same fish rises for a second time at the same place, it's time to try your fly. On the leader, we've got one of Phil White's low-lying spent spinner imitations.
After a few drifts, success. The fish rises and takes the fly and is well hooked. Tiedem's autumn rainbow trout are well known for the strength and this trout isn't about to give up. Losing a fish is all part of the sport, but it still feels disappointing. It's much darker now, and the evening is coming to a close. Suddenly, the silence is broken by new rises along the edge of the reeds on the other side. The fish has only shown itself once, so Johan tries to extend the drift and fish as long a stretch as possible. The tactic works, and in the end, the rainbow trout can't resist White's low-lying spent spinner imitation. After a long fight, the trout gives up and the evening ends on a high. In the river's faster, almost rushing stretches, you can find fish behind almost every stone. But if the fish is going to see a dry fly on the surface, there also has to be a still flat spot above the feeding area. Here, the fish can quickly spot a floating insect, and it has no time to hesitate or the food will be gone. Two large flat spots can be seen between the stones below the neck of the pool. The skating method is a must but the limited space restricts us to fishing with only one fly on the leader. During the fight, the trout exploits the current very effectively. This is why we must try to force the fish into a backwater, so that we can get it into the net.
Before we carry on fishing in the river, the dry fly must be dried out. The moisture is soaked up using an amadou patch and then it's impregnated again with a drop of floatant gel. Don't forget to fish the quieter waters close to land, where you can get some real surprises. To prevent the fly dragging and being pulled out from the flat spot by the current, you need to keep as much of the line as possible, between the tip of the rod and the fly, above the surface. The simplest method is to wade as close as possible to the rises. This doesn't normally scare the fish, as it has problems seeing clearly through the broken surface of the water. Sometimes it pays to skate the fly over possible lies several times, so that the fish gets a few chances to take it. Johan successively fishes the one still flat spot after the other, while moving slowly downstream towards waters yet to be fished. A really deep hole has formed in the middle of the rapids and there are always fish there. There's enough space to use two flies at once on the leader, so a change of tactics is called for. In a well-executed skating presentation, the dry fly performs very much like an egg-laying female caddis fly, which very few fish can resist. In this fierce current, the rainbow trout is a worthy adversary and the result is never a foregone conclusion. But this time, Johan wins the fight in the end. Johan continues systematically to fish downstream, at the same time using his dry fly to go through all the flat spots and the edges of currents which he thinks might hide a trout. As well as knowing dry fly fishing methods, you also need to have the correct equipment to be successful. I have seen some medium-sized sedges just over the surface and I'm fairly sure about that trout sooner or later will start to feed for them. So I have changed to a slightly larger dry fly, size 10, big brushy dry fly sedge imitation. But to fish with a dry fly in this size, I had to change from my line 4 rod to a line 5 rod instead because otherwise this light rod would manage to cast a big brushy dry fly like this one. My line 4 rod I use dry flies from the smaller sizes to uh, let's say 10 size hooks. 
but when I fish with larger dry flies, I prefer to use a rod for line five or maybe six, sometimes even seven. The rod must manage to lift a fly line that has been drifting on top of the surface and get sticked on the surface after a while. So you can lift it and mend it and let the dry fly continue its drift in a proper way. Otherwise it will start to drag and I really don't want that happen. The length is also something to talk about. Some people, some good dry fly fishermen, normally means that you should use as long rod as possible. And I would like to agree with that because when I fish on a big open water like this here in River Tidon, I normally prefer to use a long rod, let's say a nine foot or even a 10 foot rod because with the long rod, I will manage to steer the fly on with those positions as I like it, the dry fly to cover. But when I fish on my small little mountain streams for wild trout, I don't get room. So then I prefer to use a shorter rod, let's say a six foot rod or seven foot rod. Maybe sometimes I will manage to use a eight foot rod as well. But a, shorter rod on small waters. The second part of our equipment is the fly reel. And here we ask for one quality and that is the brake. We want to have a smooth brake that let us use a very, very thin leader tippet without breaking it off. Sometimes when dry fly fishing we use a 6x or sometimes even a 7x leader tippet. So a smooth drag, that's for ask for. The third part in our equipment, that is the fly line. And here we ask for a high floating line. And we like to have a smooth and a soft line that don't have any curls when we cast it, because that's the most horrible thing in the world, to have little curls on top of the surface when you fish with your dry fly line. You don't like to have that happen. So a smooth floating line without any real memory, that's what to ask for. These are my ideas about how good equipment should be for dry fly fishing. Dry fly fishing on the Baltac can be quite fantastic during early autumn. To round off the day, we return to the quieter streams to see if any of yesterday evening's fish have started feeding again. To be successful when dry fly fishing this sort of quiet water, you have to first find a rising fish. Upstream of the stones, the surface is broken by a neat rise. The fish probably took something that was lying deep under the surface. To avoid scaring the fish, Johan moves quietly into the correct position from downstream. Insects often drop down from the branches of alders and sometimes even the fish have learned to recognise that the little splash means food. He places the cast a couple of metres upstream of the rises to give the fish plenty of time to see the fly. A rise as the fly is drifting on the correct line towards the rise, it can be left there.
Baltac has treated us to a lot of pleasant experiences during our time here. And who knows, we might be back again on another occasion. <laughs>